Hi everybody and welcome to the audio version of the Exploration Weekly Newsletter, this time for the week of July 9th, 2021. I'm Renee Meredith, the COO of Exploration, and I want to give my usual shout out to my very special friends Heidi So and Jules Ramos for their hard work on our newsletter every week. And now, the news. Roblox signs music partnership with Sony. Virtual world building platform Roblox has signed a deal with Sony Music Entertainment. A Roblox spokesperson says the company is in talks with other record labels as well. Roblox has grown dramatically in recent years, particularly with young viewers. The platform, a system for creating games and other virtual experiences for either profit or personal entertainment, reported 43 million daily active visitors in May. Lots of these experiences incorporate music, including through an official Roblox boombox item. The National Music Publishers Association sued the company last month for allegedly enabling piracy, accusing Roblox of profiting when users upload copyrighted songs and share them within Roblox experiences. In Tuesday's announcement, the platform emphasizes that Roblox respects the rights of all creators and uses advanced technology to screen all uploaded music. Roblox has no tolerance for repeat offenders and quickly responds to all submitted DMCA requests. IFPI to administer ISRC data system for African musicians. There is currently an intense focus on building music industry structures across Africa to support musicians and local managers and labels. The IFP announced that its Sub-Saharan Africa office will be administering the International Standard Recording Code ISRC, data systems for the continent, bar South Africa, where it's already managed by another entity. The IFPI will be holding virtual seminars this month to teach musicians how to use it. Data of all kinds is a priority for the IFPI in Africa, and its licensing and policy lead explained at the MIDEM Africa conference last week, data is something that is also very critical, and for us we look at it in terms of getting reliable, accurate data which can enable stakeholders in the industry to plan. Lyric Find expands its Brazilian business with Abramus deal. Brazil is already an important market for Lyric Find. In fact, it's the fifth largest territory in terms of business for the lyrics focused company. Now it's hoping to build on that with its latest deal, a licensing agreement with Abramus Digital, which is part of collecting society Abramus. It represents more than 80,000 songwriters and publishers, and Lyric Find SVP of international publishing Robert Singerman said the deal will considerably increase the database of lyrics that Lyric Find has to work with. We're expanding access to Brazilian lyrics, going way beyond the hits into amazing lyrics from writers and artists of all styles and at all stages of their careers. The company has plans to translate a number of these lyrics for use outside Brazil as well. TikTok is parking its tanks on YouTube's lawn, as report says its users are more engaged than its rivals. According to analytics firm App Annie, as of May 2021, TikTok surpassed YouTube in both US and the UK for average time spent per user per month on Android. The report further noted that US-based TikTok users on Android devices spent an average of 24.5 hours a month on the platform. That's compared to 22 hours per user per month on YouTube. In the UK, TikTok's lead is more comfortable. Its users in Britain were spending 26 hours a month on its platform in May this year, while UK YouTube users were spending just 16 per month. YouTube is still holding on to a lead over TikTok in both Korea and Japan on Android in terms of average time spent per user as of May 2021. Across 2020 as a whole, the average U.S.-based YouTube user spent 23.1 hours per month on the platform, and the average U.S.-based TikTok user spent an average of 21.5 hours per month. App Annie estimates that TikTok will reach 1.2 billion monthly active users in 2021 on both Android and iPhone. YouTube reported in June that it paid out over $4 billion to the music industry in the last 12 months. Indian rapper Badshah was the world's number one songwriter on YouTube last year, says New Report. A new chart released by music rights data platform Blockur shows the biggest songwriters of last year on YouTube. Blockur's songwriter charts take into account factors such as success of songs on various streaming charts, as well as the percentage of each song that each songwriter is credited with writing. The top global songwriter last year on YouTube is Indian rapper Badshah whose own channel on YouTube has over 2 million subscribers and has attracted over 261 million views. 
Badshaw's most popular videos on YouTube have been released via Sony Music India's channel, via hits like She Move It Like, with 432 million views. A second Blucker chart reveals the list of most successful songwriters on YouTube in 2020, but only those who didn't also feature as an artist. It is led by S. Thaman, a music composer and playback singer who predominantly works in Telugu and Tamil cinema. The world's number one songwriter across multiple streaming platforms last year, including YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music, was Tones and I, aka Tony Watson. The most successful writer in 2020, specifically on Spotify, says Blucker, was Phineas O'Connell. K-pop propels YouTube to streaming dominance in Korea. The powerful appeal of K-pop is a major contributor to YouTube taking up position as the dominant streaming platform in South Korea. Netflix, which has also invested heavily in Korean film and TV, is the leading subscription video service in the country. South Koreans streamed 169 billion minutes of online video in the second quarter of 2021, according to a quarterly report from consultancy media partners Asia, which leans on the company's AMPED research platform. YouTube accounted for 81% of minuted consumption, compared with 13% for all subscription VOD platforms combined. Live streaming and gaming accounted for 4%, while TikTok took up 2%. YouTube and Netflix have a strong lead in AVOD and SVOD segments respectively, while local SVODs led by Wave, TVing, and Kupang Play are gaining consumption, said Media Partners Asia executive Vivek Kuto. That's all for me this week. Thank you all for listening, and don't forget to click subscribe for more great content from Exploration. And as always, be kind to each other.